Tuesday would be another one of those. Did this, um, how, did, how did today live up to those expectations? It's way more stressful. Um, no, I think, you know, I'm a football coach, so I'm going to always lean on the side of the immediate emotion is around the game. And I thought we had some really good periods where we could have won it. Um, and then, I think mean, Claudia came up huge at the end of the game for us. Um, and, and, you know, Louisville did as a, a solid. So I think, obviously, there's, there's games over the weekend that could change it. But still, right now, the, the playoff push is, is in our hands. That, that could obviously change with a, a, a big result for Houston. But um, we wanted the win. We didn't get it. Um, but there were some positive signs of our, our team tonight, um, which those guys have just lent on. Um, I thought we played some really good football at times. And, you know, some, we had some big asks of some players, putting Sonic back in at centre-back, Ryan Brown coming in at right-back, having not even gotten the roster last week. Like, you know, it's a, we live in a crazy world. Um, Phoebe having a very specific job to get hold of Trinity and... Um, I thought she she was exhausted at the end of it, but I thought she kept Trinity pretty quiet until the end. Um, and yeah, just a little bit of quality in the final third, which you know, you guys know that's been a broken record all year for me. So overall, the night if if I'm not thinking about football was amazing. You know, I, I I've been <laughs> trying not to be emotional about it. Um, but it's hard when you think of what it means for the club, like to having, was it, how many was it, 30? 34 or 130. That many people here, like, it frustrates the hell out of me that it's taken Pino to retire for that to happen, because we've had it for 10 years. But I think it just shows people want to watch us play. They want to watch these players play. And we have to capitalise on that. That's That's the biggest thing for me is, all of this means nothing if we don't capitalise on it. And, and that's something that Pino has lived by. She has wanted to make the place that she's part of a better place for now and for the future. And if we want this club to be where we want it to go and what we all believe it should be, we have to get these people back. And if we don't, we're letting Pino down. We're not letting anyone else down. You know, and I think that that's... If there's a message from it, that's my message. You know, we have to make sure people come out and watch this team play because that's what's going to push us to the levels that we want to go to. And 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 I will say it till I'm blue in the face: this is a special place to be. Um, and I've always have believed that when you get a taste of it, and a lot of you have been on this journey with us, you don't want to let it go. You want to come back to it. So I think that's my overall emotion about the whole day is this is amazing, but let's not lose sight of what it can be big in the bigger picture because we need to push this thing on. If we can have 34,000 on a night like tonight, why can't we get that all the time? And let's go out and make that happen. <clears throat> Can you talk more about Megan Rapinoe's impact on her personal life and her impact on the club throughout this entire year? On my personal life? Oof. You just want me to cry now. Um, look, I said this yesterday, and I'm going to try and say it without getting upset, but I think when I came to this country, I, I'd lived in a world where... And, and it's, it, it was just what it was at the time. Like, the life that you lived outside of your job, it wasn't really something that you celebrated and made part of who you were. And when I came to this club, not just Pino, but everyone around the club, you know, took me in with open arms. And I was this 32 year old with a girlfriend who had no family here and they just took me in. And you see someone like Pino just live so authentically in who she is that it made me feel okay doing that too. And so, there's no bigger impact on my personal life than that for, for what Pino's done for me. And, you know, I think we're very close in age. She would hate me to say that, but we are. Um, so we've grown up through a lot of the same things. And I haven't been a player through it. I've been a coach through it. But I've lived through, you know, I'm a female coach and people thought that I shouldn't be a coach because I was a woman. I've lived through, you know, homophobia around who I am. You know, and I think that... We li we've lived through that, so 
have I lived through the same thing she has? No, but I can relate to what she's talking about. And I think that's a big part of the impact she's had on me. The other big part of that she's had on me, you know, I'm, I'm an English woman who was honestly naive and uneducated about a lot of the social justice stuff and the kneeling around the anthem and all that. I, I didn't understand the gravity of what that was. And she educated me on that, like, with no doubt. And I hope I allowed her to have a space where she felt comfortable to be able to do those things. But there's no doubt that she educated me on that too. So I think from a from my personal life, she's made me a better person, there's, there's no doubt. And I will be forever grateful for that. Um, and I can't remember the second part of your question. Because <laughs> I just didn't want to cry. <laughs> what was your second part? Uh, the second part was her impact on like the club and the overall oh. season. Just, obviously. I mean, obviously, I this year's been a tough year for her. She had niggly injuries and obviously the World Cup was was a big deal. And But you've seen over the last two games, like, she could keep playing. I, I wish she would, but, you know, she's not. But she could. She can still impact games. She still can whip a ball in like no other. And, and that's a big part of who we are. So she's still a threat, which is wild. Um, but what she's done for this club, and I said it on stage tonight, and Jess was actually the one who prepped me on what to say, was when we started this club and we lost, you know, 10 games on the bounce, that was a moment of time where I was like, oh my God, what are we doing? And we had the philosophy that we've had for a long time and it just wasn't working. And she came in and gave us belief that it could be something special. And, and she was the catalyst to turn it around. And, uh, and she made us all believe that what we were actually doing and what we were doing on the field, how we were trying to play, sort of my vision of what I wanted the team to look like, it came to fruition and she was the catalyst of that. And yes, we brought in other players which really solidified that. But she gave me the belief that what we were doing was right. I think gave Bill and the ownership at the time confidence that I was the right person to lead this thing on. Um, so I'll be forever grateful for that. Uh, the second half Sunday and tonight, the collective defensive effort was yeah. pretty impressive. Can you talk about how that mentality um, is going to be important going into this part of match with everything on the line? Well, if we're going to get where we want to get, we have to have that. I think we have to have some better quality on the ball. Like that was. That was missing at times in the second half. We just kept giving the ball away with, without quality, which we weren't doing in the first half. We were really turning the score on them um, in the first half. But there's no doubt that when you're playing against teams who have players like Washington have, you have to have that mentality to be able to stay in games. And, and honestly, we played way better in the first game out in Washington. I, Performance in Washington was up there with one of the best we've had all year, but we conceded a goal off something stupid. And that mentality piece was missing. So I think tonight is a step in the right direction. Last week was the same thing. But our quality on the ball has got to be better. We've got to be better. We've got to be better over consistency over 90 minutes. Um, and that's a big, big area for us that we've talked about a lot, but we'll continue to do going into next week. All right, two for me. Um, first question. Did the atmosphere and the size of the crowd increase uh, your step count? I mean, the ref kept telling me to stay in the technical area, so probably. I don't know how to, I don't know how to work the new watch, so I, I can't really look at it, but I felt the ref literally told me four times that I was outside the technical area, but so probably. The second question for me is, you mentioned them er earlier, but I just wanted you to just talk a little bit more about the shifts that uh, Phoebe and Ryan uh, yeah, I thought and, and right. Claudia did it, you know, in terms of just team defense today. Yeah, I mean, I get asked a lot of questions about Claudia, and I think um, she came up big tonight for us, um, both with the ball and without it. I think we could, in the first half, we played through her a lot, and it meant that we kept the ball more, um, and we didn't do it as much in the second half, and we gave the ball away a lot. So. I think it's something that we can be better at and we can utilize them more on the ball. Um, and that save at the end, I've seen it. It's phenomenal, world class. Yeah, uh, back here. Uh, oh, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm just wondering about, in terms of you know, the attendance tonight was you know, over 34,000 and my editor found a stat that Rapino's first game was uh, 2,000. <laughs> I saw that too. Yeah. Um, what does that kind of, you know, that drastic difference mean to you? Um, you've already talked about it a little bit, but like yeah. you know, how the image that was changed. Oh yeah, the, the, this this league and this sport and women's sport in general is exploding. It's exploding. But I'll say what I, I someone asked me this this week, and I think 
We've obviously done a really good job to get people here, but we have to do that every week. So if we need to have extra resources to be able to do that and meet the explosion that this sport's having, we need to get extra resources. We need to have the ca capability to market ourselves at the level we've marked it, marketed ourselves this past however long it's been. And I think that's no fault of anyone's. We just have to make sure that we up our game in every department. and. Uh, and I think that's a big thing because tonight proves that we can do it. If we did the marketing push that we've done and no one turned up, then I'd go, okay, I'm wrong. But they did. So that proves that we're right. And um, I think we all know that women's sports is going through a, a real culture shift right now. And, and this club should be part of that. So I have two questions. One is, uh, how has Megan Rapino influenced the clubhouse in, in a positive way? Um, because I could tell from the interview, she's a very funny person. Mm, yeah, and nearly as funny as Great sense of humor. <laughs> how, does, how does her bringing joy to the clubhouse influence uh, the team? Yeah, I think, you know, I watched the, what was it called, The Last Supper, this one, yeah. um, with the three of them. And it's hard to think about Pino without the other two, honestly. Um, and Pino's the funniest one out of the three of them, just for clarity. Um, <laughs> but... I think that light-hearted humour um, is something that she has always had. Her timing is exquisite too. Um, and she keeps sort of that balance. Like you can tell Jess is very intense about football and that's what's made her amazing. Pino's the funny one and lose the glue that holds them all together. And I think that um, we're going to have to find someone who meets the, the humour part and you know I can't carry the load on my own without Pino. So. <laughs> Someone else is going to have to step up. But, um, but yeah, I think her willingness to have that light-hearted moment is what makes her amazing. And I say this all the time, the humour that you see in front of the camera is the same humour that you see behind the camera. And I think that um, that authenticity of who she is allows her to be so comfortable in any environment that she can say and be and act in a way that's really impactful on people. Um, and there's been no bigger impact than even in our locker room. So, uh, yeah, she'll be missed. And my second question is, uh, it seemed like throughout the game, uh, you know, Washington was able to sort of run faster than a lot of the players and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Uh, does that have anything to do with, you know, short rest, or is that something that you was trying to work on with the team, getting them to be more quick? <laughs> I mean, I would love that, but um, yeah, I think short rest a little bit. I think it's emotional too, I think. We put a lot into the game and managing sort of the emotion around this week has been hard. We've sort of tried to drip feed it honestly over the last month where we've done things pretty much once a week to make sure this week wasn't the first time we spoke about Pino. Um, but I do think that a big part of Washington being able to do what they did late was us giving the ball away. And we, ne we need to be able to keep the ball in those moments. I think that's that's pinnacle to our success. It's what, uh, when we do it, it's what makes us great. Um, but yeah, I think it's just an area that we just need to continue to work at, that when we're feeling tired and fatigued, that we just need to show a little bit more quality in those moments. I'll take one more contact. Hi, Meg. Hi, I'm not gonna make you cry. Mm -hmm. um, okay. <laughs> just in terms of going into a decision day, I'm sure you'd like to be in a little more secure location. Yes, please. Um, um, but you did get some help from yeah. Louisville tonight. Yeah. I know we've talked about parity a lot over mm. the years, but just in terms of, there's a lot on the line yeah. on a single day. How do you try to manage your piece of that without maybe getting overwhelmed by, I mean, last week we were at 729 different outcomes, right? Like, how do you manage that part of it? Yeah, I think I think you just have to take care of your own business. And, and I think that's, again, if Houston win by five goals tomorrow or whatever it is, three goals tomorrow, then or whenever they play, then our, our destinies are out of our hands. I'm right in saying that, correct? Yeah. Fine, yeah. Three? I think it's three. Yeah. It's three. You have two plus two. We're two plus two in there, yeah. And we beat them on head to head, so I feel like it. Okay. So they have to win by three clear goals. Okay. Um, so as long as your destiny is in your own hands, all the other stuff, forget it. Like, it doesn't matter. Just do your own job. Um, and we've never had a decision day where it's been, you know, 
everyone playing at the same time. So having been through that maybe once before in England, which was a long time ago, I think you just got to take care of your own business. And then when it gets to sort of that last 10 minutes of the game, knowing what's going on in elsewhere, if you haven't taken care of your own business would probably be what I would look at. Um, but yeah, no, I don't think I've been in that situation in this league. I don't think. Definitely not with the rain. Are you going to, I mean, I know that you just said like last 10 minutes, if you, yeah. how is that information going to get, like, are you going to have someone in your ear telling you, okay, this is the result here, this is what's happening here? Yeah, someone on the bench will have it. Like tonight, I didn't know the Orlando score until maybe the 75th or something. And then in the 89th, I dragged Jess over and said, do not lose this game. <laughs> so, in better words than that, but yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, we, I just think that that's, it, the players don't need to deal, they just need to do their job and their job is win the game. So let's do that. Let's hope that we can make sure that we can do that and, uh, you know, good luck to Houston, but come on LA. Great. You owe me. Thanks everyone. <laughs> Thanks Laura. That's it. Thanks Bye. guys.